In this video, I'll be talking about my 33 on 33 plein air painting project from 2013, recounting days 7 through 12. You generally can't miss a town that has its name on a water tower, but if you were to visit here between 1939 and 1953, when Weller's Bay was home to the Consecon Air Weapons Range, you might have known you were in Consecon by the sound of bombs, rockets, and explosive projectiles fired at various targets in the area. Today it's known as Weller's Bay National Wildlife Area, and this was a lovely morning to paint there. The name Consecon is derived from a native word for the local and plentiful pickerel, or a similar one meaning the opening of a waterway. Choose your own side of the debate. You can get more information at the kiosk I parked near, which features a big map of Prince Edward County. Uh, the orange dot is where I was on that day. And if you turn around from looking at the map, you'll find the County Junction Family Diner, which has a really cool wagon out front, displayed like some historical monument. But there isn't any plaque or anything, so it's probably just a nifty antique. Uh, the milk cans are chained down, but who's going to stop someone from pulling away the wagon? Maybe the wheels are somehow locked up? I don't know. Uh, I didn't look that closely into its security features. After having the wind knock my painting off my easel too many times on day one and day two, I decided to secure my canvas to the easel using twist ties around the hanging wire but I forgot my twist ties on this day, so I came up with a nifty, handy-dandy alternative solution using my little digital camera's case and strap, which works even better because I could still rotate the canvas without having to untie it. On day eight, I parked at the entrance to the Lafarge Quarry and had a look around uh, for some good scenery to paint. Uh, looking right and to the north, there was this nice rocky view. Uh, looking left and to the south, there was an even more interesting view. So I set up my gear and prepared to get started. The sky was overcast and rain was expected, but I was pretty confident I could get started outside and move inside the van if I needed to later. It started to rain lightly, so I tried to reposition the van to get the same view as my setup, but it didn't work out because of the gravel drop-off, so I picked a different subject which was directly across the street, uh, and then I painted the entire time inside the van with the side door open but instead of raining harder, the sky started clearing. On day 9, I arrived at 33 and Partridge Hollow Road for a day of in-the-van painting due to the rain. It had rained all night, and when I woke up, it was still pouring down, so I set up the van to give me a view of my subject. Then it stopped raining. Still, it was chilly, and the rain looked like it would return any minute, so I played it safe and stayed inside with the side door open in a sort of replay of the previous day's precautions. This view is facing north, and it's the reverse angle of my painting subject uh, for day nine. This was the view directly in front of me of uh, Partridge Hollow Road. You could see the dark skies somewhat receding. I was lucky to have found this entrance to a field that was safely out of the way of traffic while still giving me a good view facing south on 33. Uh, the rain made everything here fragrant, and the greens were quite lush. This barn was my initial subject of choice for the painting for day 10, but I looked around for options anyway, just in case. Uh, across the street yielded a few nice possibilities, one of them being this great view of a farmhouse with a couple of silos in the background. But on my side of the road, I could see Pleasant Bay, and that view was the one I liked best for day 10. It was cold and the sky was gray, and rain felt like it was imminent, so I set up inside the van again and started painting my landscape. By around 9 a.m. a bunch of horses were led out of their barn and gathered at the fence near me to check me out briefly. Then, after some frolicking, they went on their horsey ways closer to the water. On day 11, I reached the one-third mark from my 33 on 33 project, and I was supposed to look for a spot to paint around Palmer Burris Road, and I initially parked at Harwood Estate Vineyards, but I decided to head eastward back down 33 in paint by the barn I'd noticed many times since the beginning of this project. 
A couple of hours into my painting, a gentleman came over from his house across the street to see how I was doing. It was cold again, but I set up outside, hoping the clear skies and sunshine would warm me up. It did. Barely. Turns out this was Ross Burris, uh, Ross Burris and Sons, proudly displayed on the barn, and he informed me he had lived here his whole life. We had a nice chat, and then he went on to tend to something in the barn. My stop for day 12 had me in the hamlet of Hillier, uh, which has a population of roughly 100 people. I doubt, though, when the community was established in 1823, that anyone would have guessed it would one day be known for its wineries. I first parked beside this barn thinking I might want to paint this, but I uh, kept looking around for other options. A little ways down the road I saw the Town Hall, the municipal centre for Hillier for over 140 years. Built in 1867, it's the second oldest town hall in the county, the only stone building in the village, and is now marked as a national historical site. And then I finally came across this scene which became my painting for Day 12. <laughs> 